Friday afternoon, folks. Ted Rolson here at Think Tech Studios downtown, downtown Waimanalo, I might suggest, uh, with uh, two great guests, Kainoa Jimenez Hello. and Michael Morris, uh, yes. CEO and CTO of Corlea Gold, a local upstart, new start, uh, well-respected drone operation here in Hawaii on Oahu. And uh, our show, Where the Drone Leads, we're talking about this time the drone leading to a community opportunity near you or an op or a activity in your community near you. And that brings up the very important issue of community connection, community outreach, and community involvement in terms of something new like drones and moving into this world of drone technology. As the way I look at it, uh, it, it, we see a surveyor in the streets with a surveyor gear and stopping traffic every now and then. It looks, you know, we're used to that. It looks normal. It's okay. We understand surveyors out there. See the power truck out there from the power company servicing the poles and such. You know, give them some room and let them be. It's fine. But you see a guy out there with a drone. You're not quite sure exactly what he's up to. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And uh, the surveyor is standing right there. The power company guy is right there by the pole. But the drone guy could be here and his drone could be a quarter mile away. So. We'll see drones in our community doing public service, doing uh, research, doing information collection, agriculture work, for example. But we really need to educate the community about the value of these drones, what they're doing, and, and the various forms of legality that is behind them. And you are thinking about that a lot over at Colea. Absolutely. So tell us uh, how that comes to you as a new starting company and how you have to think about that. Yeah, um, just this past, Two, uh, two weeks, two weeks ago, right? We were down at the Capitol, yes. and um, we, first of all, highly recommend if you want to do networking, go down to the Capitol. That's the best place to be. Do you meet everybody and anybody? You never know who you're gonna meet there. So, it's and you were there two years, two weeks ago at the uh, at the Aerospace Summit. At the that Aerospace Summit, and thank you again for that opportunity. I'll thank Jim Christofuli and the guys at DBED for putting that on. Yes, thank Mahalo. You, Jim. Let's, let's Jim. do a shout out to Jim. He doesn't get much shout outs. Jim, Jim, you're on Mahalo. it. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, leading to a meeting with Representative Jared Keokalole, and also to um, meet Senator Sam Slam, and we look. You know, the, the important question there at the Capitol was basically, what can we do for the community? And that's a big question that we both, Kaino and I, were thinking a lot about. I mean, the community is our home, you know, we were born and raised here. So what we focus on was a lot of issues that we deal with, with um, transportation, traffic. For our industry it was more airspace, you know, mm -hmm. how we're gonna figure out how we're gonna be able to all understand what we're doing in this industry on, and we're on the same page. So community work was our, um, our goal and education. Education is where it's um, basically where it's at, where we can go and go to these schools especially and reaching out to the kids and seeing, you know, how can we come up with a program to work with these students to teach them how to operate safely in Hawaii and to figure out problems like traffic. Um, I, I wanna do a shout out to Ivengi To'oto'o. He's a um, proud father of nine kids in Nanakuli and he talks about traffic in Nanakuli and what, you know what, why don't you use a drone for traffic, um, letting us know how the traffic is on the west side. So you're talking about a real soft and easy in version of drone functionality into the community's life. And traffic is like the main essential issue. Traffic, water, food, right, and pe even pedestrian safety and such like that. So observing patterns and collecting information, writing, generating maps or seeing how factors influence each other and getting the kids involved in that through so the educational program. And that's where you come into the picture since you're an <laughs> educated and trained engineer now and see this thing from a, from a sort of a technical side. Yes. But you know, this interesting part, especially the fact that you guys are a technical guy and a business guy sitting side by side, technical guys often, I don't mean this pejoratively, but technical guys often don't see the things like the community involvement aspect. And, um, and the fact that you have the additional insight from Micah that makes sure that you're always going to see it that way is great because the strength you've got from a technical understanding can penetrate into the value statement the community sees. Yes. And you, from the community side, 
can see how you have to reach and grab out of the engineering people what the values are from their technical perspective. Absolutely. So this is a great opportunity for technical education and getting these kids interested in becoming engineers or scientists as well. Yes. So tell us how you're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> there's a few things that we could um, cover, but one thing that I would like to, I guess, involve the kids in would be how to design their own drone, get, get ideas of what every single kid, because every single kid that comes to that class probably has an interesting story. And a different story, and, and a, a different, different idea. Story, and okay. a unique, exactly, and it's unique. And it's their own intellectual property that we want them to create. And so that's what engineers are all about, intellectual properties, and how those intellectual properties can give back to the community in a sense. And sometimes we do, as sure. engineers don't see the community aspect, and that's where we need the, that's where I have my business partner to, I guess, coax me in the right direction, nice. as opposed to stay towards more technicals. <clears throat> so the community involvement maybe actually begins in the elementary years of the school programs. Yes. And kids have parents. Parents are interacting with the kids, so the kids can take messages home to the parents. Absolutely. And, and can bring in messages from the parents. So you get the picture of the whole society that way by working at the school level. That's, that's our goal. Our, our goal is to have at least three, four kids over here on the show with next us. Next show, you do, okay? <laughs> kids here. Yep, next week, next week Friday. You guys be ready. We're going to have okay. kids up here, have some drones, and we, we start talking about community and what we're going to be doing with uh, designing and building and... Um, really just inspiring their minds i mean this is this is this is it this is where hawaii is and our location this is a priming spot for us to you know take a take a smart approach on this t using this technology the engineering mm -hmm. the energy and it's very exciting like, every time I'm talking about <laughs> it especially yeah. coming on this show that's great you know, and I, I like your idea of the traffic, to, to take as an example, traffic in Nanakuli. I don't know that that's why, certainly at some, some parts of the day, we go there for the canoe races, and it's, it's, traffic is an issue on, on uh, uh, the highway through uh, Nanakuli. So think of a project out that the school could get involved in, the kids could get involved in, and it doesn't have to be a fast-paced project. It can take its time. It can, it can learn and grow as time goes on and begin just basically observing traffic flow observing how the side streets and the main road interact. Observe how time of day affects the traffic direction, traffic flow, and get the kids to think about this. Let them actually do the collection of the information. Yes. Let them build the drones, as you suggest. Yes. In fact, have several different drones doing the work and look at the comparative differences of various uh, solutions to the problem and start an actual project. In fact, start it right at the school. How about traffic at the school itself? in terms of entry and exit flow in the morning and the afternoon when the kids come in and out. What a great project to do right there for the kids in their own school. Right, right. Uh, I, even that, that whole concept of, yeah, starting at the school, using the school property, and, and there's, you know, as experts in, in uh, especially with the Part 107, we understand what is allowed to be done here on on the state, in the state, and even at schools, um, using using our drones. I mean, we'd be more than happy if, you know, we reach out to the community, schools, if you folks look into using drones for anything in particular, you know, give us a call, you know, and at Coleo Gold, we, we, we are more than happy to join you. And you, you having, you know, two smart engineers with you ready to solve problems and, this is this is the future, and this is something that uh, we, we want to push to the community and get them excited for something that we can we can focus on. You know, uh, technology. You know, everybody's perspective on technology can be, you know, qu quite scary. You know, they they're not too sure what it's all about. But if if you have an imagination, you know, like to solve problems that we deal with, especially here in Hawaii. This is where we're starting here at home. 
let's use it. You know, we, we had a Hawaiian compass that we would use to guide with stars to travel the world. You know, we would use tools to um, start fire. We knew how to, we would use tools to catch fish at our fish pond. We, we didn't even have to use a fishing line. We would just build a brick wall and have a, a fence and just have little fish come in, feed it, and then now they can't go out the fence. Dinner. You know, we knew how to use technology and utilize it. This is an opportunity for our community to use this technology to solve problems. That and we if we can take today. that very idea and, and get it into a, a, a document of some kind, it, it can become a chapter within the best practices of how to use drones in, in, in this state. And in fact, just sitting at this table last week was uh, Senator uh, Will Espero, 19th mm -hmm. District, and we had a lot of a lot of good conversations, but one of the ones he reinforced over and over again to us, as he did at the at the at the aerospace summit, was, okay, you guys out there, the network that contains you and others, you're involved. You guys have the information. You tell us, the state, what we need to do to move forward. You help us put together an operating manual, so to speak, which would contain many chapters. One of which would be the community involvement. One could be with education. Two of them we've talked about right here. Help me put together that that operating manual, that standard operating procedure, and then and then help him determine what legislation is needed, what directions are needed in, in budget and in, in, in rulemaking to make this all come forth. And so what you're outlining is exactly what Willis Sparrow asked for last week right here. <laughs> so, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> so, um, I think we, uh, we have to talk about how we're going to structure that. And I have an immediate opportunity for you in Kaneohe, we'll talk about after we get back from our first break. Yes. Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. Um, we are here to show you news, issues and events, local and around the world. Join me. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for a likable science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. We are back live here, folks, Friday afternoon in um, downtown Waimanalo, oh, overlooking yeah, Waimanalo. Waimanalo Bay with uh, okay. <laughs> our great friends from Kalea Gold, who are about the third time you've been on this show now, and it's starting to become, yes. feel like home, right? Feel like a glove that fits pretty well. Yeah, and maybe I'm you can host the show sometime as yeah. soon as you're ready, right? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Motus, thanks for coming on board. Absolutely. And all Jimenez, thanks Thank for coming you. on board again. Thank and you uh, we're having a pretty cool conversation here at break about this book, this operating, operating procedure, this manual, this set of intelligence and, and guidance that would be useful for constructing how and, and informing uh, how drones are to be used here in the state of Hawaii uh, to the benefit of, uh, of all of us. And it would help a lot as straightening out understandings and straightening out uh, uh, determinations of how to make best use of something like this. You mentioned the Department of Transportation. We mentioned the film uh, office here. And uh, how about DNLR? How about the agriculture people? How about the Department of Health? Yes. Uh, every one of them would have some thing they can find that's useful in there and some hesitation they've got because they don't have the information. So putting together this common operating manual would go a long way. And if we can get them involved in putting it together, and you've already started, we're talking about community involvement, talking about education. So um, just in our minds here, just yeah. think, think forward for a minute. Uh, we got to put this thing, we got to have we got to generate eight and a half by 11 pages that have pictures and graphics and narrative in them. And we have to do it. So the best thing that we have right now is resources. There's a lot of experts in this industry, especially here in Hawaii. And right here at this table with the two of you guys. Uh, yes, all three of us. Uh, uh, thank you. And the, the main thing that we know, well, the plan is 
we got to get everybody all together, even if it's a computer in front of us. <laughs> but we all sit down at a round table, have all of us sit down and start writing chapter one. Here we go. And we know for sure that chapter one is, is this uh, understanding of what a drone is. You know, we, in this round table, that's the most exciting thing, too, is that who's going to be there? You know, we're going to have us three. We're going to have George, of course, George and Mike. I mean, they're experts as well. But more, important, um, more importantly is the community. It's all of us who's going to be. There's no, you know, special. You know, why don't, I, why don't we talk, talk about that for a moment? We're talking about chapters in a book that would be inclusive. Why don't we start with chapter zero being the community, even before chapter one? Let's talk about the community and the importance of yes. working with the community, involving the community, and then that would lead to the education. Put those, why don't we put those together, community and education in the same chapter zero, even before we start talking about the technology and all the other values. You know, what goes back to what's in my mind, I think we might have talked last time a bit, there's a book called uh, The Painted Statue, which is, uh, was written about 10, 12 years ago, and it deals with the Kamehameha statue in Javi on the Big Island which had to be, our, our re, it, was, it was having some structural problems and some aging. Mm -hmm. And the question was, how do you restore this statue? Well, do you, re, do you restore it to the terms of the letters that uh, were written in the kingdom days when the statue was created, that what the statue was supposed to be? Or do you re recreate it or refix it in the, in the image that the artist had who constructed it in the first place? Or do you reconstruct it in the way the community had adopted it and modified it over time? Which one is right? But the, an the answer was the community had the answer. So instead of coming from a scientific perspective, the thing ran into all kinds of trouble, so I had to reverse and go from a community perspective. So I think over and over again, community first might be the, really, the way to approach this thing. And that might be a uniqueness that Hawaii has. Other communities that don't have quite the, other states that don't have quite the, the sense of our communities we have here in an island environment might not quite see that. So this could be unique. It yeah. definitely is, That's and it's the first step to our and, our big vision. And guess who's going to write that first chapter? Oh, you know, you guys. Oh. Oh. And George Purdy. Hey, yeah. George. George. Hey, let's just make a point. George and Mike Elliott and the others uh, from our, yes. our favorite uh, groups are out in Kualoa Ranch right now, uh, conducting the awesome. second to the last day of the World Drone Racing Championships. And uh, for the po folks in the public, that is open to the public. However. It's very tight on parking. It's a remote area, Kualoa Ranch. In fact, the Kaaba Valley associated with Kualoa, hard to get to and hard, there's not much parking there. So if people are heading out, they're thinking about heading out tomorrow, think about going early and think about maybe having to turn around in case the parking is full because it is a very fragile environment and it can't to tolerate a lot of people. There's a lot of interest, but, and, and this brings up another point. The interest out there, I was out there yesterday, and you guys are, I'm sure, are going to be out there tomorrow. But just seeing that technology playing out in the hands of a lot of people from around the world speaks, again, about the community aspect. There's a community of, of technology application people which are making the drone racing piece happen. Myself, I'm not quite so much concerned about the competition aspect of the drone racing. I like the fact that the, it, it attracts the kids in the STEM orientation and the STEM domain. And I ask them all the time, hey, if you could see these drone racers at work, imagine how they would work in agriculture, in finding lost people, in search and rescue, in beach erosion issues. How would you use this technology up close, fast, and precise? How would you use that to collect information you need to manage your interests in your community? So I just make a shout out to the guys, uh, Scott Refsland and the guys who put that all together, and to the public who are heading out there, heading out there tomorrow, just be aware of the tight parking situation. Yes. But I, that was an interjection. I, we mentioned George, I want to make sure we get a shout out to him. He's involved in that as well. Of course, of course. And yeah, since we're on community, that's what we'll be striving for. Mm -hmm. um, looking for a particular location, a venue that we can invite the community over and we, simple enough, we just talk about drones. What do you know about it? What do you like about it? What? Since we talked earlier, pardon me for interacting, inter <laughs> no intersecting yeah. your wonderful dialogue. That's, that's what happened. Monologue. Uh, <laughs> we talked about traffic in Nanakuli. Yes. You guys, why don't we think of, why don't we do a, 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 a community event in Nanakuli? 
Okay. Uh, starting as soon as, as we can find a location to do it. And just make it as informal as possible. This would be under, if it's under 107, we all, all three of us here are licensed 107 yes. operators. And there's no airport within five miles of Nanakuli. No. So we don't have a worry about, it's, it's all class G airspace, I'm, I'm guessing. Yes. There could be some restricted airspace in Makua and such, but that's five miles yeah, away. Yeah, Makua has the, the military restriction. And we'll, we'll look in the section, we'll find a place where we, where we can do it, mm -hmm. a park or some area, and just simply demonstrate the functionality. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. I, I know. And, and we have it on camera here. Yes. Micah, it, it's done. It's done. It, okay. It's in there. <laughs> okay. be there. And you're going to bring the engineering aspects into the discussion. Oh, yes. So we'll have function and engineering. I'll have uh, the representative in that district. Um, I do not recall her name, but I know she's she started a Facebook page um, regarding traffic. That's who we. Okay. That's where we can present the use the footage for the feed, and that's where it'll be on. So um, those of you on the Waianae coast on the island of Oahu, you know, look forward to this opportunity to demonstrate traffic using drones, and this is this is the project. Yes. What we would probably do, just thinking about the event, is uh, besides the discussion and the safety precautions and the other things that 107 tells us we must obey, the operational part would more than likely just, I'm guessing, uh, launch uh, into a stationary position a uh, video return drone or something taking still pictures and after half an hour's worth of flight or so, just bring it down yes. and go through the analysis of what can be done with the imagery collected, the stills, as well as a video, and just show how we can now, we've now captured a half hour's worth of traffic in this particular area, mm -hmm. and so patterns and rates and accumulation of, of uh, stoppages and such can all be measured by this means, which you might not see when you're standing on the ground looking at it. Absolutely. Oh, and there's current, and there's, it's funny that you brought it on the quiz because there's current um, road work as we speak they're adding new turn lanes that's supposed to help the traffic, but in reality, it's making it worse. Well, let me tell you where I live. I live <laughs> in Waimanalo, and we're seeing that situation right now. I think if we had had this conversation a year ago in Waimanalo or two years ago and looked at what's actually, what the, how the traffic actually works in Waimanalo versus what the design of the, re, of the redesigned Kalani Anaole looks like, yes. we might have different answers. And maybe it's not that's, too late to yes. get in there. So, but on the other hand, we can't do this and a front department of transportation so mm -hmm. they have to know that we're doing this i would yes, suggest of course and um, make sure that this is all done that everybody's seeing it together yeah we're having some serious issues in Waimanalo, and uh, um, yeah, the, this leads actually to other questions that, that again come back to community involvement i wonder <laughs> if the nanakuli work on the on the road was done with both full community involvement i can tell you that it was not done that way in Waimanalo. And um, I'm guessing it probably wasn't. And that goes back to another point. I was thinking as I was driving in for our show here. Community involvement is a requirement. It's a checklist item on, on, a, on a contract, we'll say. So the guy has a meeting with 20 people show up. Okay, I did my meeting. I had my community involvement. But you didn't have your community involvement. You had a meeting, or maybe even not even a meeting, but you didn't really have community involvement. Mm. And so this can help. So we have, a, we have some interesting uh, uh, challenges you've taken on here, sir. Uh, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. I agree. This is all part of what we were just talking about. Rather than saying it, they have to take action. And you bring the representative from the area in, and we'll bring in uh, uh, Senator Osparrow, and uh, we'll just do a little and have potluck in Hawaiian style luau, right? Gotta have food. Gotta right? have food. Always. Okay. Gotta have food. Uh, yeah, we can definitely move in that direction. We will definitely get the contacts in Nanakuli. Why not? Please be ready. We, we are coming to at least you know, provide that aerial footage that can help with traffic. Uh, we believe it can help, you know, it's just another perspective that will benefit how we look at things. And trust me, it is different. It is different. And the pictures that you take will become part of the chapter on community involvement. This, <laughs> this then becomes the, the first element of community involvement. Yes. That's well, great. It all starts from here. Okay, okay. And you know what? You guys are going to get, you're going to host this show sometime, right? That's what I heard, <laughs> right? So what, what you do is you make deals with the people who come on, and you, and you got them on TV, man. You can't escape it. So, yeah. so you need to think, when, when you're hosting the show, 
you got to get some guy here and get him going on a deal. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Get him in it. Oh, that's a deal. Yeah. Shake on it right on yeah, camera. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> right on camera, man. Can't get away from that. It'll be on YouTube all over the place. And, and so we're there. But anyway, we'll do it. What will we call it? The Nanakuli Transportation Shoot. Nanakuli Transportation like. Shoot. Okay. And to pick it in an area where there's where the work hasn't necessarily been done yet yes. by, the, by the highway department, so we're not con not, not, not confrontation. Stepping on anybody's toes. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, that's the other part of community involvement. Don't step on anybody's toes. Yes. Everybody working together. Right. Cool. Well, gentlemen, yes. uh, as usual, it's been great having you on here. Have the ideas work. that come tumbling out, and I really appreciate the fact you were spending your time in the Capitol. If you could take your story to every one of our senators and representatives, and the committee heads, and this sort of thing that have anything to do with drones or would want to influence how they're used or anything like that. That is such a valuable um, uh, act. And also, it's a learning point. If you could, if the kids in school could come along with you, grab a couple of kids in school. See, this is how representative government works. That is so cool. And mm -hmm. so, once again, and we got, can't forget the engineering part of this, because you know why? The, uh, the systems we have today aren't going to survive the U.S. is not going to survive the challenge of RTCA, the radio tele telecommunications uh, community that's coming up with standards that drones have to obey. So we're going to have to re-engineer all these things sooner or later oh. with digital radio. Ready on it. Ready, ready on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All, thanks for coming on. And Micah, thanks, yes. for, thanks for making a deal. Time right here in front of all the people <laughs> in the state of Hawaii. Hey.